Good morning, everybody. Tate Hall joins the show. Uh, Loyola, Chicago basketball player and uh, 2016 Greenfield Central graduate. Uh, Tate Hall, how are you doing today, my man? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. How's uh, quarantine treating you right now? Yeah, it's definitely tough. I mean, got to find some stuff to do. Um, you know, I got to be creative with your workouts. It's kind of hard to work out. No gyms are available right now. Um, yeah, I mean, you just got to be creative uh, going outside or running or, I mean, I built my home gym here in the garage, so it's kind of, just kind of do what you can. Right. Now, I guess, I guess kind of like regrouping and going back, I want, I want to talk about how, where you guys were in a season first uh, currently, and then kind of go backwards a little bit and l let everybody know how you got to Loyola um, and where you stand now. So you guys were 32 games in the season before they shut everything down. Uh, and take us back through, through that first full year and not really considered a full year because really wasn't any postseason, but take us through that first year of a pretty successful season for yourself and also the basketball team. I mean, just overall experience. Give us a, give us a little breakdown on that and your thoughts. Yeah, obviously it was a good experience. Uh, like you said, I had a pretty good year, both individually and as a team. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it filled my expectations for sure. Um, I mean, to be able to come in, you know, after my redshirt year and just kind of contribute the way I did, it was really exciting. It was kind of um, – it was really fun, obviously, just to be out there with the guys. You know, that redshirt year was kind of hard on me. It's probably the hardest year of my life. Um, just kind of, you know, just sitting back. You play – you play, you know, throughout your whole life without stopping, and then you have a year to stop and just kind of sit and watch. Um, it was definitely hard, but I think I benefited a lot from it, so – but yeah, um, it was definitely a fun year and ready to get going again after all this is over. So, so once what, what were you doing at the time of uh, once they said, "Hey, we're shut. You're completely shut down. We're not doing anything. You got to go home." Um, where where were you guys at on a standpoint as a, as a program? Yeah, well, uh, our conference tournament is earlier than everybody else's. So like we're like one of the first uh, tournaments to play. You know, you saw like the Big Ten, SEC, all of them. We got canceled right as they're about to play. Um, but we were, we were already done. Um, our conference tournament was already over. And we, so I was back in Chicago just, you know, chilling and, you know, about to work out and stuff. And then all of a sudden you see on TV that everything's getting canceled. I sent people home. So, and after that, after we saw all that, we had a team meeting. And then, you know, they sent us home. School shut down. And now we're here. So. Now, that's got to be probably really, really tough, especially coming from off of, a, you know, your red shirt season, not playing at all. And then playing a season, and then having to almost sit out. It seems like just from from not even being able to work out. I mean, I think a lot of people yeah. now, and you could probably, you know, um, quote me on this. You never probably missed working out, shooting the basketball in the gym more more now than ever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're not doing anything, and there's nowhere to go. So I mean, it's kind of hard to get. Like I said, you got to find ways to get it in, and you know, keep yourself busy. So. Yeah, and I guess kind of for everybody to, to kind of give everybody an idea of where you were at uh, post-graduation, you know, 2016 graduate, um, had a pretty successful high school uh, career, good good group of guys. Uh, your class, in my eyes, probably one of the most talented groups uh, that's gone through the Greenfield Central uh, basketball program in, in a long time, uh, which is great to see. And, I, you know, I think I think what, what you guys developed and kind of started a new culture is, is really taking off and, and having a good impact on the other, the, the younger generations uh, to come here. Uh, but going going from graduation to uh, your next steps, uh, what did that look like? You went you went to UND. Uh, take us a little bit on that down that path uh, to let everybody know kind of where you became. Yeah, uh, out of high school, I knew I wanted to stay close to home. Uh, you know, just kind of I was young. I didn't really. I mean, I didn't want to be away from home. My parents and I want my family to come see me play. So, um, but yeah, I mean, out of high school, I wasn't really heavily recruited. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of D2 offers, and, I, you know, like I said, I just want to stay close to home. So, UND's a good program, um, good head coach and good players around. So, I just kind of felt like that was the best fit for me. And then after those two years, I mean, I had two pretty good years. Um, you know, I just kind of felt like it was time to take the next step. I mean, you know, as a player, you want to play at the highest level as possible. And, I mean, I have future aspirations to play professionally. So, um, I think – taking that step up and, you know, having that red shirt year uh, would benefit me in the long term. So would you, would you say that when you made that decision that you were going to, you probably had multiple different offers to, to come play at the level at that point in time. 
Um, but, but take yourself back into your physicality standpoint. I mean, I, I get it because I was a twig. I mean, you were the same boat out of high school, twig. Um, you take a picture. I think I saw a picture of you. Um, I went face, I wasn't Instagram stalking you, but I was like, dude, he is thick. Like you, you are dense now. Um, that, that's probably what has separated you from having a successful year this year than probably any other. Right. And what, I mean, what were, what were you doing different? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Out of high school, definitely twig you know I was kind of a late bloomer anyway um just turn to terms of maturity and all that but um yeah I mean even at, when I got to UND I was really big into you know taking care of my body eating right um and I still do today I mean you know just kind of I think the biggest thing is you know just kind of taking nutrition um nutrition like seriously um, that's really separated me, I think. You know, and I, I've always liked the lift. I always like, you know, like I said, taking care of my body. So I think that's really, yeah, like you said, the separator. What's got me here, so. Yeah, and then, and then so you, you, you had multiple different offers to go play, um, you know, across probably the Midwest at the Division One level um, after your sophomore year at UND. Uh, what was the decision for Loyola? What, what made it for you? Um, it's obviously pretty cool. Um, other than Sister Jean, everybody knows about the yeah. – the whole, you know, Final Four run that they made a few years back. What, what was it other than those, those awesome things that the culture is bringing to, to Loyola and to the, you know, to the city of Chicago? But what was it that did it for you? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of coaches asked me when I transferred, like, what am I looking for in a program? And that was number one thing. Like you said, culture. Um, I, you know, I wanted to be around guys that, you know, worked hard and um, had the same mindset as me, you know, winning every game and, do whatever it takes to win, no matter who gets the credit. And that's something they really preached to me. And um, at, the, yeah, at the end of the day, that's really what sold me. And obviously, they're, I wanted to go somewhere and win. And they have obviously, 2018 Final Four. So, um, you know, just kind of a history of winning, you know, keeping that culture in place. So that's really what had me there. So you guys had a 21 and 11 season, uh, had got in 32 games, more than the majority of NCAA uh, teams uh, due to the coronavirus that took place. Um, you know, I think, I think you guys obviously, no, no one ever settles for mediocrity. I know you're, you're such a competitive person that you won't either. Um, I, think, I think your next, your next year and a half, uh, two years is going to be crucial. And I, I, I look forward and I hope the community can look forward to following you uh, down that path. Uh, going through those 32 games, was there, a, was there one specific game, uh, maybe it was game one, that you, you stepped on the court and you're like, Wow, this this you know almost like a dream come true. This happened for me. Um, take us back to that moment. Was it game one, or was there a specific game where you're playing maybe a you know a, a big Big Ten SEC school in some point that really was like okay, I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. Yeah, no, it actually took me a little bit. Um, just kind of let it sink in, you know, when you first step on the floor, you know, just you're playing basketball. But it's really when we were in Phoenix and you know, we played Vanderbilt and. Uh, <laughs> I had two back-to-back -back dunks, and after that, I was just like, wow, this is, like, the real deal. Like, I mean, I'm at the highest. Like, I just kind of said – it took my took a step back and just kind of realized, like, I'm, I'm here. Like, this is, this is real. So, um, yeah, it was definitely a good, good um, moment for that. So, I'm um, just kind of thrilled and excitement. So. I wouldn't say that was just the two back-to-back -back dunks. That was a hammer. Yeah. When you drove down the lane, I was <laughs> – the second it happened, Twitter extra absolutely blew up. Um, I remember, I think, scrolling through, and Chandler Bean had some, always has something to say with, uh, with, with some type of comments. And oh, the second I saw it, I probably watched it 45 times. Um, I'm going to post it. I'm going I'm to put it in this video so you can see it um, on, on, on Tuesday for everybody to take a look at. But it is, oh, it's absolutely a takes it to the rack and flushes it hard. Um, and they are in Phoenix, Arizona, actually, where the Phoenix Suns play. What's that arena called? Uh, it's kind of a weird name. It's like Talking Stick, Re Talking Stick Resort or something like that. Yeah, I'm not. It's weird. Super yeah. weird. Yeah, it's yeah. like an Arizona thing, I think. But Is that the farthest trip you guys took? Uh, we actually went to the Cayman Islands. I forgot it's about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that. I would have totally spaced. That's something to talk about. What? How was that experience? Because I know when I played at Ball State um, my freshman year, we went to the Dominican Republic. And we played games and did some mission work with some of the communities there, which was absolutely awesome. So take us back, take us back to the Cayman Islands. Um, that, that had to have been absolutely amazing. Yeah, obviously it's, it's a really nice area. Um, 
what really threw me off was when we first got there, we got on the bus and we're driving on the left side of the road. I mean, yeah, it's like, a, I think it's a British Virgin Island. So, I mean, they, yeah, they're kind of a little different, but um, yeah, we're driving on the left side of the road and like the way, the, the way their roads are set up, it's like roundabout. It's like, I don't know if you want to go right, you have to, I don't know. It's just weird. It's kind of hard to explain, but um, that's what really was interesting to me. And obviously you see all the cruise ships, you know, it's a, it's a tour destination. So, um, but yeah, it was a good experience. We stayed at a really nice resort. Um, didn't really get much time to go outside and stuff, but I think we had one day after we were done playing, uh, just kind of hang out and go to the beach and stuff. But, um, yeah, that was fun. Well, before I ask a couple more questions here, the first one I've got is I know your dad is, is such a such an awesome asset to your life, your parents and your family. Uh, I know I got the chance to see you play at Ball State this year, and it was such a cool experience to uh, to watch you play. And and um, but I, but the what I'm getting at with this is your dad, I think, which is cool, didn't miss one single game this year. Um, I think that to you probably means the world, uh, and I think it would mean a world to a lot of lot of people. I mean, that's got to be so cool. Every single day, every single game, you can look up and stands and know your dad's there watching you. I mean, um, I think I think you really truly probably appreciate that. And um, Dad Goni probably put a lot of miles on his car. Yeah, I understand. I mean, like you said, you know, you know how you have someone that, in the stands watching you uh, every game. You know, that, I mean, that's something I appreciate for sure. And sometimes I call him crazy because it'll take a 10-hour drive to a game that we're playing in freaking Missouri. I'm like, how do you just how do you drive that? But because um, I hate driving in the car, I'd rather just fly and get there as fast as possible. But now explain yeah. that. Okay, so that's an experience too. I got to experience at Ball State is you weren't bussing, buddy. You got to fly. That that to you probably that's got to that that was a great feeling to me. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure for you, it was like, oh God, such a breath of fresh air. I don't worry about sitting in a bus and trying to sleep and all this jazz. Cause I'm sure you and you guys were busting everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Like you and I think we took, we took a nine hour trip, like to the border of Canada. We drove a bus and you talk about awful. I mean, that was just, I mean, especially, you know, if you're tall like me, I mean, getting comfortable in those seats is not easy. So no, thanks. No, thanks. Uh, now, now, fast forwarding back to where we're at currently. Uh, obviously, everybody shut down. There's no place to go work out. There's no place to shoot the basketball. Uh, what have you been doing? Give us maybe a rundown of your day to day routine. Obviously, you probably you might have been hitting the golf course a couple of times because I know your dad's not sitting there letting you just sit on the couch or something. So, uh, take us take us through a little daily routine of Tate Hall Tate Hall during coronavirus. Yeah, I mean, I usually I usually get up, um, eat breakfast, do all that jazz, and then uh, I, have a, I have a gym. So to call and set up in my garage, uh, just like some dumbbells. Been jumping a lot of rope, um, you know, stuff like that. Just kind of body weight stuff. Um, but I, you know, I have a basketball basketball hoop in my in my driveway. Just kind of get out there uh, when the um, weather's nice. You know, uh, you know, basketball is a, you know, you got to stay in shape, um, keep your conditioning up. So I've been going to the middle school and running the track. Uh, a couple of days a week, and then I usually sometimes actually uh, been recently going to uh, Riley Park and um, running that big giant hill, which is Ooh. kind of a yeah, that's, that's a right off the 40. You said what that sledding hill right off the 40? Yeah, oh, no, thank yeah, um, yeah, I run up that about five to ten times, and that <laughs> that'll get you for the day, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, you just gotta, like I said earlier, you gotta find ways to be creative. Um, with all, you know, like you like you said, all the things, all the gyms closed and can't really go anywhere, just be outside. So, um, that's what I've been doing recently with all this, uh, coronavirus stuff. So, and then last question here, um, yeah, I think you're right. First off, you're right. You got to try to improvise. I think that's where everybody's at, whether you're an athlete, whether you're, um, well, heck I had Dre on last episode and Dre was talking about how he couldn't even, he was a first round draft pick and he couldn't even go to the facility and work out because he wasn't considered on a 40 man roster. So he was going to a park throwing weighted balls against a tree. I mean, trying to make it work, and that's everybody. I mean, everybody's trying to improvise and find the best way that would work for them. Um, so I tip my hat to you and keep keep up the good work. We're all going to continue to uh, follow and support you as much as as much as possible. Now, where I where where I wanted to kind of dive in just for a few minutes here, and I'll let you let you get going on your day, um, was where I noticed a big big transition of you physically um, in your game. I mean, just just off of your feet. I mean, you 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 became very very agile and quick. Um, take us through 
through your workouts and um, and whatnot with Taylor Ware, um, who is now the Bishop Chatard head coach over at Bishop Bishop Chatard High School. Um, how big of a how big of an asset to, to your career right now has he been for you in the last five years? Yeah, huge. Um, I mean, you know, he's give me an outlet to go work out and you know work on my skills. Um, you know, I've been I worked out with him almost every day in the summer uh, in May when I was home. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's huge. He, you know, he has some really good workouts. You know, he's really good skill. Um, and he, you know, um, there's a lot of good players that work out with him. So you know, kind of creates a uh, area of competition. And uh, we always play like two on two and stuff. So I mean, just playing against good players like, like um, I don't know if you know Taylor Persons or yeah. uh, Taylor. Taylor was at Ball State when I. Uh, yeah. When yeah, I was, you know, uh, he was been around uh, Desmond Bain. He's He's about to get drafted. He, he went to Kansas State, didn't he? Or no, TCU. <laughs> That's right. uh, you know, I mean, he has a lot of other pro guys, um, too, that have been around. So uh, just, you know, competing with them and playing against them, you know, you just kind of get better. That's awesome. Play with them, so, yeah. awesome. Well, Tate, I got one more, one more, style, what I always ask on everybody before they, before they pop off. Um, a little bit of any, any words of encouragement you can give somebody young, young out in the world um, that may, may look up State Hall or may may have that dream of becoming a Division One basketball player, heck, playing basketball at the next level. Um, so if you had any words of encouragement, you know, uh, what, what would you give somebody? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, just continue working hard. You know, for me, I was a 5'11 freshman who couldn't even jump, who couldn't even touch the net. So, I mean, just kind of being persistent and knowing what you want in life um, is – you know, you just got to keep grinding and don't let anybody else tell you you can't do something because you can. Um, I'm just continue to grow and kind of learn and be a sponge. You know, if you have coaches that are pushing you and, you know, telling you all this stuff, you know, just be a sponge. Don't take it in the wrong way. Uh, that's, I think that's really helped me, you know, just kind of being a lifelong learner um, as I've grown up. So, um, but, yeah, just continue to work hard and don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything. So. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time today, uh, Tate. Uh, look, look forward to this uh, video coming out for you guys tomorrow. Um, and it, like I said, Tate Hall is a phenomenal guy. Tate, what's your, where can people find you on social media and give you a follow? Uh, I think my handle is at Tate underscore Hall on Instagram and then uh, Tate underscore Hall 41 on Twitter. Perfect. Well, I'll put those out there as well. Go give him a follow. Go check him out. Um, the dude's got some great things coming in the next, next year, year, year or two. Uh, I look forward to following his uh, following his process. Uh, Tate, is there a local restaurant you've uh, you result if you had if you had to go have a meal in the, in the town? Uh, you, you got a town or a, 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 a spot you like to go to? Man, I love food. That's kind of that's you put me on the hot seat there. Um, local spots. Woo! It could be corporate know. chain. It could be. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Oh come on! Okay, then let's. I'll I'll put it. I would, say, I would say the mug. I mean, the mug's always a good spot. There, that's, uh, there you go. It's right down the street too, from him. Yeah, there's a new place called Costas Grill. It's like a Greek place, I think. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, really good. <laughs> I got that when I first got home, and I was like, "Oh, this is really good." I'm big into Greek food too, like Mediterranean food. So he that just was right up my out, alley. He just put out something, I think, on Friday of a uh, of a uh, special Greek dish that they've got. And it, oh, yeah. dude, I, I'm, it makes me want to eat right this second. But yeah. Yeah, good, good stuff, Tate. All right, man, well, I'll let you get going. Uh, once again, appreciate you joining the show today. Uh, please uh, let us know if you need anything ever. Uh, we're, we're all here to support you, and uh, appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, man, take care. Have a good rest of your day. We'll see you later. That was Tate Hall from the Loyal Chicago men's basketball team. Appreciate Tate stopping in and joining the show uh, this week. I wanted to send everybody off and let them know to please go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button below if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, please go like us on all social media platforms at Inside Hancock County on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for tuning into the show this week. Tune in next week for another phenomenal episode of Inside Hancock County with Mitch Gibson. And always remember that you can make a difference, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.